Welcome to the final part of our series, God-Given Desires and Flesh Patterns of Sin. We'll conclude by exploring the path to true freedom in Christ. What is the nature of temptation? Well, many translations of James chapter 1 and 14 suggest, and I'm quoting now, we are tempted when we are enticed by our own desires, end of quote. But a more careful reading shows that temptation comes from Satan who baits us using our flesh patterns. I've paraphrased James chapter 1 and verses 13 through 15, and I want you to carefully listen to this commentary of what I believe that James is actually conveying. When you are tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. For God does not tempt anyone to display a character contrary to himself. But every person is tempted when he is lured and baited by Satan. Under his, under Satan's patterned desires and passions. When we allow our desires to be made pregnant with Satan's character, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is acted out, it brings forth dead works, which are derived from Mr. Death, Satan himself. Well, maybe I should give a further explanation to my paraphrase. Because I believe that this paraphrase beautifully captures the essence of James chapter 1, 13 through 15, showing us that temptation is a process initiated by Satan's deception. Temptation is not something God sends our way. It's Satan baiting us with our own flesh patterns, seeking to lure us into fulfilling desires, God-given desires, which we've been talking about, in sinful ways. And when we allow our desires, these God-given desires, to be aligned with Satan's character, the result is sin and ultimately the consequence of death, because all sin is Satan's character, and the wages of sin is death. Let me illustrate it like this. Just like a fisherman, Satan uses bait to hook us, drawing us into actions that align with his character rather than God's. Now, it's important that we begin to understand Satan's strategy. Satan knows our idiosyncratic flesh patterns, the ways we've learned to operate apart from God. He's very familiar with them because he was the one that tempted us in the first place. And he continues to tempt us to fulfill our God-given desires in sinful ways. Imagine that. He is the devil. He is the tempter. Let me illustrate it like this. Think of Satan as a skilled salesperson. He takes something we genuinely need or desire, but twists it into a version that's harmful. For example, the desire to be loved is legitimate. But he tempts us to seek that love through inappropriate or sinful means. But the good news, ladies and gentlemen, is that we are not powerless. 
Satan wants us to think that we are because he doesn't want us to understand that these flesh patterns of sin are not personified. They're just stored in our memory and he's tempting us with old memories to act out sinful patterns to try to get our needs met apart from God. The good news is, is that Christ has already won the victory over sin and we can resist the devil by simply standing firm in our faith. A window of understanding. Temptation does not come from God. Temptation does not come from you. It is not a reflection of who you are in Christ. Satan uses deception but Christ's victory is our strength. When we resist, it's not about our power. It's about Christ's power already working in us. That's so important to understand this. God's not asking you to do something that he knows you can't do. He is your ability. And whatever he commands you to do, he's also the dynamic or your ability to accomplish it. And that's why it's important we talk about what it means to resist temptation. We resist not by fighting Satan directly, but by relying on the power of the Spirit of Christ within us. As James chapter 4 and verse 7 tells us, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You see, our responsibility is to submit to God and rely on his grace to overcome temptation. Another illustration would be helpful at this point. Resisting temptation is like standing under a protective umbrella during a storm. The umbrella doesn't stop the rain from falling, but it shields you from the downpour. In the same way, God's grace is our umbrella, shielding us from Satan's schemes when we stay under his covering. Our union with Christ as we understand and walk by faith in union with Christ he is our only true shelter from Satan's fiery darts. A final window of understanding. Resisting temptation is not about struggling harder. It's about standing firm in the victory of Christ. We are not called to fight Satan directly, as I already mentioned. That's God's battle. Our job, if you want to call it that, is to surrender and allow Christ's victory to flow through us. In conclusion, living in freedom from flesh patterns. Throughout this entire series, we've seen how God-given desires can become distorted into flesh patterns. But we've also seen how through Christ we can live free from the power of the flesh. The battle belongs to the Lord. And as we submit to him, we are empowered to live in freedom. May I give one final illustration? Picture chains being broken. Our flesh patterns no longer have power over us because Christ has set us free. As the chains fall away, we can move freely, no longer bound by the flesh. May I give you one final call to action as we conclude this series. Take time to reflect on the teachings that we've covered in this four-part broadcast? Where are you relying on your own strength to overcome the flesh? And it's really important that I remind you there's no condemnation as God reveals where you are struggling or walking after the flesh. He's not scolding you. He's not, he's not 
chastising you. He's, he's lovingly helping you to understand that these things have nothing to do with who he's created you to be in Christ. So you have the freedom to allow him to reveal where you're struggling with the flesh. Where do you need to submit more fully to the Spirit of Christ? As the Lord shows you that, simply participate with Him. Invite the Holy Spirit to not only reveal these areas where you can walk in greater freedom, but, but to begin to embrace that as you rely on Christ's power instead of relying on your own self-sufficiency, that you begin to experience the Christ life. You begin to experience the outlived life of Jesus. Remember, godliness is not achieved by your ability to imitate God. In the same way, iniquity or sin is not the product of your ability to imitate the devil. <laughs> it's about which power is at work within you, God or Satan's. Now, if you're a Christian, Christ's at work in you, but are you willing and participating, allowing him to express himself you see, godliness is solely the result of God's activity as he produces his character in you. In the same way, ungodliness is the direct result of Satan's activity as he seeks to reproduce his sinful character in you. In conclusion, thanks so much for joining me on this journey. And if this series has impacted your life, consider sharing it with others who may be struggling with these same challenges. And frankly, who isn't? <laughs> and remember, life as God intended is a life lived by the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, not by the flesh.